What's up guys, Zach Hample here with you, back with another video on my Commemorative Baseballs 2019 edition. Now, I did a video like this last year about all the commemoratives that I got during the 2018 season, and people really seemed to enjoy it. So, back by popular demand, we're gonna do it again on all the ones that I got during the 2019 season. Now, the six baseballs that I was just holding up, that's about half of all the commemoratives I got this year. You can see right here below me on the desk what all these baseballs look like. We got the logos face up, but that's all you get to see for right now because I want to show you each of these one at a time, maybe in some cases two at a time, and just go through them a little bit slower. And I want to talk about the logos themselves, the design, some of the history. I want to compare these logos to commemorative balls from the past because it is interesting to note the differences. Might tell you some stories about how I caught some of these baseballs at Major League Stadiums over the course of the year. So with that, let's just jump right into it. And for the most part, we're gonna go through them chronologically, not strictly, but you know, kind of. And this was the first commemorative baseball that I got in 2019. You can see it right here. It was from the Tokyo Dome in Japan, the opening series. And now the lighting in here is kind of tricky. So for all these baseballs, I'm gonna show you separate photos that really get nice and close up so you can see all the detail. Now, I like this logo. I like that opening series has some nice big font right in the middle. I like that it has the year on it. It's nice that it says Tokyo, Japan. Of course, that font is so tiny that it's hard to see. And if we compare this one side by side with the Japan ball that I got in 2012, well, you can see the difference. That first one simply said Japan. This one says Tokyo, Japan. The size of the MLB logo is different. Nothing glaring, but again, it's just kind of fun to look at this stuff. And I think if there's one thing that's missing on this logo, it's the individual team logos of the teams that were playing there. It was the A's and the Mariners. This was a regular season game. And you'll see that other baseballs do have the team logos. I wish MLB did that consistently, but you know, that was left off of this one. This was thrown by Matt Chapman during the game, first base side at the Tokyo Dome, so great to have a gamer. And, uh, you know, this one will always have a very special place in my collection. Let's move it on along. Now, back when I was in the States in April, I got a couple of baseballs that I'm gonna show you right here. And these are from Spring Training. You can see the logos on them. Again, here is a closer look at them. You got the Cactus League, you got the Grapefruit League, the official 2019 spring training balls. Now, the thing that really jumps out at me about these logos is that they're so simple. They don't have anything about the league, the state where the games were played, nothing about the years. But I like these simple logos. I do often feel like less is more. Sometimes more is more, but you know, these work. But it's interesting to look at the spring training logos from 2016 and note the differences. Those featured highway signs. You did have the years on them. And then in 2018, once again, you have the years. And the thing about those logos was that each one had the outline of the state where those games took place, Florida and Arizona. So just interesting differences to note. And I also wanna point out that I don't count baseballs in my collection that I get during spring training, but there are always leftover spring training balls that make their way into the BP buckets during the regular season. And if I get them that way, which was the case for these, then I most certainly do count them in my collection. So yeah, the official spring training baseballs. Let's keep moving. Uh, next up we have, I think this was the next one that I got in April. This was the final season ball at Globe Life Park in Arlington, Texas. And you know, this logo is really sharp, I think. It has pretty much everything that you want to see on a logo. It has unique characteristics of the stadium. It has the years on it, 1994 to 2019. It doesn't have the team name, but it does have the logo, that nice T at the top. It says final season at the bottom in nice font, so you can actually tell just by looking at the logo what actually is being celebrated. But if we compare this logo to the final season stadium balls from years past, you really can see the difference. 
mainly that the logos used to be so much bigger. Look at the size of that Shea Stadium ball compared to this Texas Rangers ball at Globe Life Park. I mean, the Shea Stadium logo was probably bigger than the size of a quarter. And this one from Texas is about the size of a dime. So that's unfortunate. That is a trend that we have noticed, me and a bunch of collectors over the last few years. The logos are definitely getting smaller. And as I've said, we think it has to do with visibility for the batters. If there's a ton of ink on it, you know, the batters are going to have an easier time picking up the rotation on baseballs. And, you know, that's obviously something that MLB wants to change up a little bit. So... That's why you're going to see not just this logo from the Texas Stadium smaller, but other ones as well from this year. I got this baseball from a home plate umpire after my first game there in April, so it wasn't exactly an action shot. Not very eventful, but again, just really thrilled to have this one. So there it is, Globe Life Park, and we will keep moving on. Next, we are going to do... How about... Let's do this one. The 150th anniversary of the Reds. And I like this logo quite a bit. Love that building outline in the background. That building is the Palace of the Fans, which was the Reds' actual home stadium in the early 1900s for about a decade or so. And if you look at the very bottom of the logo, that sort of old English C, well, that was the Reds' very first logo back in 1869 when they wore the red stockings. And I love that you have the year on the ball, 1869. I mean, how many baseballs do you see, I think the answer is zero, that actually have a year on them from the 1800s? So to me, this is really a, a unique baseball and yeah, designed quite well. Now, this one I got down at uh, the third base dugout after one of the games. Again, not too eventful, but later in the season I was back and I actually caught one of these during the game. You can see it right here in slow-mo. A Joey Votto home run on the fly in left center field. I was super pumped after I got that one. I would have shown that one in this video, but that logo is actually a little bit rubbed off. So I'm showing you the less interesting ball as far as how I got it right here because it has the better logo on. So yeah, nice job by the Reds on that one, for sure. Let us move along to, why don't we do, all right, let's do this one. You got another international ball. This is from the London series at the London Stadium. 2019, you can see just a big 19 right there to the right of the MLB logo. I do like that big logo and I like the clear font London series. So visually, it's easy to see what's going on with this logo, but I think it's dreadfully boring and unimaginative. I mean, I could have designed this myself in about 17 seconds. And it's a shame because there were more interesting logos floating around online. There was one version that actually had the team logos on the ball, the Yankees and the Red Sox. I don't see why that would have been so difficult to put underneath where it says London series. But uh, that didn't make it. And then there was another version. I'm not actually sure who designed it, if it was MLB or just a private citizen, that was kind of like a tribute to the London Underground, that huge subway system. And again, that would have looked so cool on the ball. I guess that big ring looks better when it's red. And I don't think MLB really wanted to do a multicolored logo. But, you know, it's just a shame that there are these really cool ideas for logos or, I mean, really anything is possible, but when you get something as simple as this, it's sort of like, wah, wah. Anyway, this one was tossed to me by a Yankees bullpen catcher out in left field before the game. He came over and shook my hand after, really cool guy. I've gotten to know him a bit over the years, Radley Haddad, shout out to him. So yeah, not the most exciting logo, but again, just really glad to have this one. And speaking of, logos that do have the teams on there. Let me show you this one from Omaha. You can see it right here. Again, enjoy a nice closer look at it. This was a regular season game. It was the Tigers and the Royals. And if you look very closely at the bottom, those two little dark squares, those have the team logos on them. That old English D, you got the KC. So hard to read because this logo is 
nearly microscopic. Same thing with the date right above those team logos. I mean, you practically need a magnifying glass to read that. But here's what I do like about this logo. I love that Omaha appears in big font. I like that it's diagonal. I like that little outline around the letters. That's cool. I like the star in the middle of the A at the end. That's all good stuff. And that weird rectangly thing around the whole logo, well, that is the state of Nebraska. That's the shape of the outline of the state. So that's a nice touch as well. Interestingly, and for those who might not know, a little trivia, Omaha is not the capital of Nebraska. Anybody know what it is? Three, two, one. Lincoln, Nebraska. So yeah, pretty nice design overall. Just wish it were a little bit bigger. This baseball, was a gamer as well. It was thrown to me by Tigers shortstop Nico Goodrum. I think it was the ball that ended the second inning. And I caught it over on the first base side. He lobbed it over the protective netting. And yeah, what's, what's really special about this one compared to, let's say, the Globe Life Park logo or the Reds 150th anniversary logo, those other ones were used for the entire season. So you had many, many chances to catch those baseballs. But this game in Omaha, it was one day only at one stadium. So it's just like one shot to get it. I feel very lucky and fortunate that I was able to come up with this one. So yeah, this, this is really, really an extra special one to me. With that, let us move to the Home Run Derby. Ready for this one? This is kind of disappointing to me and I will explain why. You can see the logo right here. This is exactly the same as the Home Run Derby logo from 2018. You can see them side by side right here. I got that 2018 ball in Washington, DC. The only thing that's different is that they changed one digit. It said 2018 and now it says 2019. That to me is pretty lazy. Home Run Derby logos used to be more interesting. They changed from year to year, but now it's just kind of like a copy paste job. So that's a bummer, but you know what's not a bummer is how I actually got this baseball. It was during the Derby itself, made a little maneuver through an, a walkway down in front and left field, reached up, caught it, little GoPro action. And yeah, it was super exciting. Alex Bregman hit this one and you can see on the sweet spot here, again, that's the logo, and on the sweet spot, it's actually autographed by Jock Peterson. It was pre-autographed, and that's something cool that MLB did, I think, for the first time this year, where they had the participants of the Derby pre-sign some of the balls that were gonna be used in the Derby, not all of them, so if you were lucky enough to catch a Derby home run, you might also get a bonus autograph with it. I got another home run later in the derby hit by Vladdy Jr. That one was not signed, unfortunately, but you know, just again, really cool to have gotten this and the way in which I got it. So we will roll this one extra delicately. I don't need you guys hating on me for destroying my baseballs. I think they'll hold up just fine. All right, so you can't talk about the home run derby without talking about the all-star game, right? So check this out, here it is. You have this beautiful baseball with the multicolored stitches. Official ball 2019 All-Star Game with Rob Manfred's stamp signature right on there. So I'm torn because I always love All-Star Game baseballs. The multicolored stitches are great and the color of the stitches changes every year based on the home team that's hosting at their stadium. You know, the Indians, their team colors are navy blue and red, and that's why you have the red and blue stitches on this thing. Here's what's disappointing. If you look at all these all-star balls right up here, a nice collage of six of them, just look at how much more interesting the logos used to be. There was something unique about each one tailored to that stadium or the team that was hosting, and there was a lot of thought and creativity and original design that went into those logos. And again, those logos also used to be pretty big, so it was easier to see the details on those interesting designs. But now again, if, if you look at this one compared to all those other All-Star Game balls, you can really see why this one is disappointing. And there was an alternate better logo than this that existed, that MLB came up with. You can see it right here on the screen. 
Now, why does the logo look like that? What's so special? Like, why is there a guitar featured into the logo? Well, I'm sure a lot of you guys know, Cleveland is the home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So that was just a brilliant idea, incorporating something musical into the logo. I thought that was so sharp, and I was hoping that that was gonna be the logo on the baseballs, but nope, we got this turd of a logo instead. I will say it was, it was nice at least that these baseballs were used during batting practice. You can see me snagging a toss up right here. I actually got four commemorative all-star game balls that day. And it's nice when I get multiples because I'm able to give them away. So I actually did give one away as a prize as a contest on Instagram, which by the way, you should totally be following me at Zach underscore Hample. So check that out. And yeah, the commemorative all-star game ball. All right, we only have a few more. Let's keep it going. Now, a lot of times teams will honor one of their great players from the past with a logo designed specifically for that player. You know, you see logos about cities and you see logos about stadiums. I always love it when there's a player logo. So right here, Edgar Martinez, Seattle, newly elected to the Hall of Fame, and the Mariners had an entire celebratory weekend devoted to Edgar. So you can see that logo right there. I think it's a really great design. Again, the only bad thing is that it's so small, but I just love that he's in his classic batting stance. I love how the bat extends beyond the perimeter of the logo. You got his name up on top. It has Hall of Fame there right below the image of him, which is cool. And then the years at the bottom, 2019. And if you look right in between those years, at the very bottom in the center, it's hard to see again, because it's so damn small, but you have the actual Hall of Fame logo there. Compare this baseball to some other player commemorative balls from the past, and you can really notice the difference. Again, the size is the first thing that jumps out. Another difference is that this Edgar ball is the only player ball that I've ever gotten that actually says Hall of Fame on it. So that is pretty cool. And here's another thing that I've noticed. Each of the other five commemorative player balls in this image that you're looking at right now, you can see all of their uniform numbers, but you cannot see Edgar's. So whether the number is featured by itself or it's an image of the player from behind and you see it on his jersey, you always see the number, but again, for whatever reason, not here with Edgar. I'm not saying that that's a mistake. They weren't just retiring his jersey. They were honoring him being inducted to the Hall of Fame. So I think they actually got this logo totally right. This one was a game used ball. I got it at the end of the first inning on my first of three games in Seattle. Nice to get out of the way early. Willie Adamas, the shortstop on the Rays, chucked it to me right over the protective net there on the third base side. and. I've got another player ball, as you can see a couple right here, where it doesn't even have an image of the player at all. One for Derek Jeter, one for Pete Rose. I always think that's kind of odd when you can't even see the guy that you're honoring, but again, just interesting to see all these differences and how different teams celebrate different things. So, there is Edgar. Let's see, what else can I show you? How about, speaking of teams honoring players and doing things differently. In, I think it was August, in Philadelphia Citizens Bank Park, the Phillies honored Bobby Abreu, one of their great players, a borderline Hall of Famer, I think, in my opinion, by adding him to their Wall of Fame. This was the logo that they came up with. It says Wall of Fame, smack dab in the middle. And it's interesting that instead of coming up with a logo specific to Bobby Abreu, which I think would have been great. They just have this generic Wall of Fame thing instead. Here's what I like, here's what I don't like. I love that you do see the team name up on top, Phillies, and I love that the Liberty Bell is featured. I mean, that's just one of the most historic and iconic things in American history. That Liberty Bell, of course, lives in Philadelphia. They even got the crack on it. You know, that's a real life thing. And I like the shape of the logo. It's sort of like a shield, almost. Um, I like the heavy ink on it. It's easy to see, it really stands out. But here's what's missing in my opinion. There is no year on this logo. The Phillies also had a Wall of Fame celebration in 2018. The logo is exactly the same. I mean, with the Home Run Derby logo, at least they changed the year. But this Phillies logo for the Wall of Fame, like exact copy paste job. So that's lazy, but again, 
pretty cool to have gotten this thing. And uh, just one more look at it there for you. The Wall of Fame. Hopefully they do this every year and you know these things end up in use. But again, this was just one day at one stadium. So kind of a special one. All right, let's move along to the San Diego Padres. They were celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. And this is the logo that they came up with. So, you know, you don't see the years on there. So I'll have to tell you in case you're bad at math, 1969 to 2019, you also don't see the team name. You don't see a team logo. You don't see a stadium, which I guess makes sense. It's not like they've been at Petco Park for 50 years, but I often do think that less is more, but I think in this case, less is less. It, it looks like a beautiful logo. I love that friar right in the middle, their mascot. Very unique to have a mascot on a commemorative logo. Can't think of any other baseball I've seen that does that. I like that he's swinging the bat, kind of losing his balance. It's goofy. I, I mean, baseball should be celebrating the lightheartedness of things. So that's all good, but I don't know. It's just like, for any random person that just happens to see this logo, you, you really can't tell what's going on. And let's compare this 50th anniversary logo to some other 50 year balls that I've gotten. You can just see the level of detail that other teams have done with their logos. There's so much information that could be conveyed and it's a big deal when a team has 50 years somewhere. And, and I just think that if you're not really putting that on the baseball, you're kind of losing the point of what the celebration is all about. So, you know, um, there you have it with the Padres ball. One last look at it here in my hand. And uh, yeah, Petco Park, very, very nice place. Here is the last one that I have to show you. And it's from the postseason. So there it is, the 2019 postseason logo. This one is, it's good and it's bad, like a lot of these other ones. What I like about it is the diamond shape. I like that the background is colored in fully navy blue, very ink heavy, it's distinctive, it's easy to see. Postseason, it's nice big font. You know right away what this baseball is commemorating. You have the year at the bottom, 2019, MLB logo on top. Very simple design, but it's very sharp, it's classy, it's well done. What's a bummer to me, and I mentioned this last year in my commemorative baseball video, is that for six years, from 2012 through 2017, and if you look at this image right here, you'll see what I'm talking about, all of the postseason balls had silver gray stamping on them. That was a thing. Postseason balls for the wild card, the LDS and the LCS all had that silvery stamping and then for the World Series there was gold stamping. But starting in 2018, MLB got rid of the silver gray and they went back to their standard navy blue. And unfortunately with the World Series, that's also navy blue as well. It's, it's a bummer that this is what we have now. Again, it probably has to do with visibility for the batters. They probably were not picking up the spin well enough. It's weird. It's like, you don't want the logos too big because then the batters you know, can see the spin easier, but we don't want to make it too hard by having silver or gray stamping because they can't see the spin at all. So it's like, I guess MLB is trying to find the exact fine line to walk as far as how to design these logos to make it fair for the hitters and the pitchers. And now you got juiced balls and now you got the Astros cheating and you have all these things that are affecting the competitive balance. So I guess it's good that they're doing what they feel they have to do to change these logos to make it fair for everybody. But again, as a collector, it is kind of a bummer that the logos keep getting smaller and they keep getting rid of the colorful stamping. But what can you do? This baseball, I should point out, is actually the very last ball that I've ever snagged in my collection up to this point. Still plan to snag a ton more next year. So this was Lifetime Baseball number 11,142. It was tossed from the Astros bullpen by Brad Peacock pregame in the ALCS. And yeah, just really glad to have this along with all the others. I keep saying that, but it's really true. Commemorative baseballs for me are one of the most fun things to collect. Commemorative balls and game home runs doesn't get any better than that. And sometimes you get a home run that is a commemorative ball and then it's like, I feel like I've hit the baseball jackpot. So 
I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I forgot to mention, but that's pretty much it. You know, this, this video has been very long. Thank you to those of you who are still watching, who stuck through the whole thing. You know, when the postseason hits, the whole pace changes for me. I have a lot of free time and I could be pumping out many more videos. I have lots of ideas, but I just need to relax. I need my own off season to recover so I can come back in April strong and just attack the MLB schedule again. So I'll try to put out videos maybe every week or so over the course of the winter. And then during the season this past year, I was pumping them out every two or three days. So yeah, if you wanna see videos on anything in particular, feel free to leave a comment and suggest it. And even if you don't have an idea for a video, I always welcome comments. I try to keep up with the comments on whatever my most recent video is. And again, check me out on Instagram at Zach underscore Hample. I try to look at the comments there as well on whatever my recent post is. So, you know, give a shout, you guys. I'll try to be in touch on YouTube, Instagram. And uh, that's about it for now. Thank you so much for watching.